I still think it's incredible that we live in a time where we can think of an idea, a problem, and with some basic 3D modeling skills, create a physical product or solution that day. Cable management under my desk is all 3D printed, and so are these brackets that hold up my mini PC, and then so are these magazine display holders, which actually turned out pretty nice. And then so is this, this little bracket which holds this massive light tube. This seat bracket as well for my racing sim, these wind simulation vents, this butt kicker mount on the back for the base shaker, even all the stuff that I've 3D printed for my PC builds. I mean, these are genuinely things where your only other option is to get something fabricated or maybe milled out of wood. But we're not in the 1800s anymore and we have these desktop 3D printers. This one is the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. I have been so, so curious about this thing. I've been using the X1 Carbon for a very long time. This is the bottom of the product stack is the cheapest Bamboo Lab printer that you can buy. So I'm curious how much of my really good experience with the X1 Carbon trickles down into this thing right here. So what exactly are we looking at here? Well, this is your filament roll, which goes through this tube right here into this hot nozzle, which is rapidly drawing your 3D model layer by layer. It is a magical and really satisfying thing to watch. This is known as a bed slinger 3D printer because the bed does actually move as one of the three axes. And the biggest object you can print on this thing is a 180 millimeter cube. That doesn't sound like a whole lot because this is the mini variant of the A1 at the end of the day, but that is a surprisingly productive amount of space to work with. This vent, which I printed for my racing sim, can actually fit on the A1 mini. I would even go as far as saying like 85% of the stuff that I've ever 3D printed would be fine with this amount of space. Now, hardware wise, this thing is actually built surprisingly well. You've got a steel and aluminum frame, and I actually think it looks quite aesthetic as well. Most of the cheap 3D printers out there don't look that great. This one though, looks like a little piece of lab equipment. It could be part of a clean setup at home. I was actually really surprised setting this up too. It does actually have a camera built in right there. It is a pretty big downgrade in terms of the responsiveness and the frame rate compared to my X1 Carbon, but the resolution is quite good and it's more than enough to be able to open the app and just inspect the print if you're not able to see it. Even comparing the specs to my X1 Carbon, the A1 Mini holds up extremely well. The nozzle gets just as hot, the build plate goes up to 80 degrees, and the tool head speed is the same. It's only the acceleration that is cut in half. You can even swap to a different size nozzle tip as well. Default is 0.4 millimeters, but you can go as detailed as 0.2 or for really fast printing up to 0.8. The biggest difference is the lack of an enclosure for the A1 and the A1 mini, but we'll see how much of an impact that actually makes. So the hardware is nice, but what actually makes a high quality 3D print is this right here. It's the software, it's the tool head speeds, the temperatures, the retraction amounts. The cool thing is though, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. You just select the presets and Bamboo Lab has it all figured out. Especially if you're using their filament, you get an extremely well calibrated experience. All you need to do is drop in your 3D model, click auto orient, select your printer, the build plate you're using, the filament, and then what kind of quality you'd want to print with. The higher quality presets use thinner print layers and slower print speed. So your print is going to look really good, but it's going to take almost forever. What I use is usually something like 0.12 or 0.16. That's going to give you a really good balance between print quality and print speed. If your print has overhangs like this one, you can select create supports. And then there's two more things that I usually do above the default settings. There's a setting called avoid crossing wall, which I usually always check and then I change the wall order to inner, outer, inner. After all that, you just click slice plate and then send it off to the printer. So I watched on very closely to see how the A1 Mini would get ready for a print. And for the most part, it's actually the same as my X1 Carbon. It has automatic bed leveling, which is an absolute godsend, the single most important part of getting a successful print by far, and also calibrates the flow dynamics of the filament. From there, it wipes the nozzle and starts printing. And damn, this thing is quiet, like eerily quiet, especially when the nozzle fan isn't running. This is easily something that you could have sitting on your desk and it wouldn't be annoying.
Another difference I noticed, the A1 Mini didn't do any first layer inspection like my X1 Carbon does. That's because it technically can't. It doesn't have the micro LiDAR sensor. That sensor enables the X1 to scan the first layer for any defects and send me a notification if it thinks the print will fail. But yeah, obviously at a fraction of the cost, I'm not complaining. Just watch that first layer yourself before you walk away and do something else. Watching this thing print though, very impressed. Extremely fast, just like my X1. and. So far, the model looked basically perfect. And it was. This is a pump res bracket that I made for an NZXT H510 build, and I've printed it here in matte black PLA. This is pretty unreal print quality. There's some slight sketchiness where the overhangs and supports were, but man, look at these layers. Like, there's no visible seams, gaps, artifacts, no blobs. Just honestly an almost flawless print. I've only used 10% infill for this one, so the top layers do look a little bit thin, but an extra top layer and this would be perfect. The bottom layer also has a texture to it because I've used the default textured build plate, but you could swap this to a smooth surface if you really want. But yeah, first print, couldn't have gone any better. Now PLA is all well and good, but what if you want to print something that needs to be stronger or have a higher temperature threshold? For that, PETG is a really good option, but it does need higher print temperatures than PLA. So I was interested to see if the A1 Mini could handle it. Turns out it's no problem at all. This is an airflow vent, which I printed for a previous PC build. Thought I'd try this translucent PETG. It's kind of like a smoked transparent material and it's okay. You can definitely see a lot of layer lines on this print, but that's no fault of the printer. It's more so just the material. Again, no gaps or seams or anything like that on the print that needs cleaning. The surface is very smooth. Something that you want to be very careful with with PETG though, if this sounds like something that you'd want to print with, is that it absorbs humidity in the air very quickly. And at that point, it's pretty much useless. Ask me how I know. The P1S, the X1 Carbon, they have the heated AMS2 Pro system as an option, which can solve this issue. There are third-party filament dryers though, which you'll be able to use with the A1 and A1 Mini, and Bamboo Lab's own AMS HT, which should get support for the A1 series pretty soon. I do have my hands on one of those, but it's just not compatible with the A1 Mini yet. So yeah, PETG on the A1 Mini, it is definitely doable, but you will need a third-party filament dryer for the time being, if this is something that you're gonna be printing a lot of. The same goes for nylon composite materials like this one here. If you want the highest strength and highest heat deflection, this is basically as good as it gets. But just like PETG, it soaks up water in the air like an absolute sponge. And at that point, it's basically unusable, so you'll want a filament dryer on hand. Can you actually print this stuff on the A1 Mini though? Well, in Bamboo software, they say it's unsupported, but then they say you can, so long as you upgrade the nozzle, which is actually quite easy to do. It's just a couple of clips here and then a easy swap. I don't have the upgraded nozzle on hand, though, but I still really wanted to see what this filament would print like on this printer because I use this stuff a lot. So I kind of hacked together a little bit of a profile, copying the settings from the A1 to create a kind of custom A1 Mini profile but it's the exact same temperatures, volumetric speed, and all the stuff that really matters. I've printed this exact part on my X1 Carbon only recently, and it did come out a lot nicer. On the A1 Mini here, there's a lot of stringing, there's some dots and some blobbing, and that kind of stuff, it's almost definitely due to the humidity in the air and then getting into the spool and the filament as well. Had my filament spool been sitting in a filament dryer while I was printing, and also not printing in such an open area that could be prone to humidity, then yeah, we would be getting much cleaner results here. This is still a nice functional print Print though, it's just not so clean. Basically, the more advanced the filament is in terms of strength and heat deflection, generally the harder it is to print. PLA is absolutely no problem on this machine. In fact, it is actually mind blowing how good this thing prints PLA. It's quiet, fast, and just produces flawless prints. It's by no means an engineering grade material, but for most things, even brackets that I'd actually want to use, they don't need to have insane properties, so PLA is perfectly fine. PETG and nylon composites can also print on this as well, but until Bamboo Lab updates their AMS HT to be compatible with the A1s, you'll need a third-party filament dryer to get the best results. Until then, a P1S or X1 with the new AMS2 Pro, which has active heating, 
is a more hassle-free solution. ABS is also something that I tried and it didn't work. It's actually very impressive how many materials you can get away with without really needing an enclosure, but you will need one with ABS. It is becoming a less popular material these days because it's pretty hard to print and releases so many VOCs into the air as well, so I don't think this should be a deal breaker for most people. But yeah, there it is, the A1 Mini. I would say if you don't need to print parts that need like insane strength or heat deflection and they don't need to be too big, like bigger than this for example, then this thing is kind of a steal. If I really had to eke out one complaint, I mean this is really reaching, but uh, loading in new filament can be a little bit tedious. You just have to keep pressing that extrude button to see that new filament come through the nozzle. It just doesn't push through enough by default, at least that's been my experience. Apart from that, I can definitely see why this thing is so popular.